Like most Subaru owners, I've owned a ton. I had my first Subaru when we started this channel back in 2015. It was a 2008 Legacy GT Spec B. It was my first nice car. Of course, I had owned a Ford Escort before, but it wasn't as nice as the Spec B was. It was perfect. Four doors, all-wheel drive, turbo, and even had the six-speed transmission from the factory. I loved that car. I had found the perfect daily driver, and after three years of ownership with it, I decided that it might be best to experiment with other cars and see what else is out there. I never should have sold the Legacy, because not but a few months later, I found myself buying another one. Well, I bought a few. But most notably, my 2005 Legacy GT Wagon. This one was wild. Built engine, big brakes, big turbo, and a big mistake. So, I might have made a mistake. This car apparently was sitting in deep water. Deep water for a long time. So, I had to part out the car and sell it. I then moved on to a Subaru Forester, first owning a high mileage NA Forester to experiment with, and it turns out I loved that hunk of junk. So I sold it and bought a turbo model, which of course led me down the slippery slope of modifying it with every STI part imaginable. 2015 STI steering rack, engine, 6-speed transmission, Brembo brakes, BBS wheels, all the JDM body panels, and more. I'd finally done it. I've built the best Subaru, and it was actually reliable. We drove it from Florida to Alaska, we drove it on track, drove it in the snow. It was invincible. The best Subaru ever. So, of course, I sold it. I wanted to buy an FDRX7, and I needed the money. Well, now that I've been out of a Subaru for a while, the opportunity has come where I can finally get back into one. This time, I'm going all out. And instead of STI swapping something, I'm going to buy an actual STI right out of the gate. I found the perfect one with all of the specific options that I'm looking for, with one slight problem. It's located on the opposite side of the country. Well, it is 5 a.m. and I am leaving the office now to go pick up my car in Oregon. And I get to drive it all the way home. It's gonna be a fun adventure. It's a stock Civic with Civic. wheels. It's, it's a, a stock Civic. Civic with wheels. Look at that Civic. Oh my God, that guy's gonna think you're a creep. Yo, it's a 99. Portland, Oregon, and uh, we met up with Roberto from eBay, and uh, he's given us a drive to the STI, and hopefully it is what we think it is in the pictures, and hopefully the guy is legit. So if not, we might be buying a plane ticket home. But hopefully it's good. a Subaru. This time I've gone for the STI. I have a real Subaru STI, not an STI swapped Subaru, but an STI. Uh, this is kind of a nice like combination of honestly all of the Subarus that I've had in the past. Uh, it's got a lot of like stuff in the interior that remind me of my Spec B. It has the same wheels that I had on the Forester and the powertrain is what I swapped into my Forester, but now it's in the car that it came in. So it's kind of nice to have it all kind of in one package. We've got some plans on doing some changes to this car. I'm not gonna keep these wheels. I'm gonna make it look a little bit different. Yeah, this is my favorite spec. 
No sunroof, uh, which I don't like sunroofs because they're heavy and they can leak in the rain sometimes. White, because any other color can get hot in the summer and also white kind of hides a lot of dirt. Yeah, I'm quite excited to do some stuff to this car, but I'm also quite excited because we're out here on the West Coast and it's beautiful and we have a 2,800 mile drive back home that we get to take with the new car. I felt right at home in this car after just a few miles. I'm quite familiar with Subaru, and since they've basically been making the same car for the last 20 years, this one is no different. It's just a lot more comfortable, which is good because we have a long way to go. The trip in total is just over 3,000 miles. I'm going to take the scenic route through the mountains of Idaho and Montana. But before I get too far, I want to stop and say hi to one of my favorite YouTubers. What do you think of a new car? What's up, man? Uh, you know, not that impressive to be honest with you. What? <laughs> yeah, I bought, I bought an STI and then I, you know, upgraded to like a real car later on. Well, see, this is the newer one. You're, you had the, the previous it's gen. It's true, I did have the previous gen. What engine does this have? Is it like a new engine or something? No, yeah, it's the same engine. Oh, okay. It's, it's like 30 year old engine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's looking great, except for these window deflectors. I don't like these things. People do this for aesthetic reasons only. It's not for what they're actually for. It looks good, doesn't it? No, I don't like these things. Uh, but aside from that, I do think it looks good. I like the gold wheels and, and white on gold. Yeah, that's looking great. As much as I love hanging out with Jason, we do have quite a long drive ahead of us. In a Subaru, no less. Buying a car across the country seemed like a dumb idea until now. It's given me such a great excuse to get back out there and see more of this amazing country. It feels good to be back in a Subaru. This thing is the perfect street car. It's got the right amount of balance between aggressive and comfortable. The only downside is the fuel economy. I'm getting about 21 miles per gallon so far. Hopefully that will go up as I get lighter with the throttle pedal. But for now, I'll stop every 250 miles. Which happens about every three hours. But fueling up isn't so bad. The gas tank isn't that big, and I always think it could be worse. I could be driving a rotary. And gas stations are always a nice way to force a brake to stretch my legs and look at the car. It's a good looking car. Speaking of, maybe now is a good time to show you all of its quirks and features. All right, well, now that we've got some miles under our belt, I figured I'd kind of pull over this gorgeous spa right here and give you a little walk around of the car to show you a little bit more in depth some of the things that have been done to it. Uh, you've probably noticed that it's not completely stock, most notably these wheels. They're from an 06 STI, which is kind of a nice throwback to the Forester I used to have, had the same wheels on it, um, which is pretty cool. Other than that, the exterior of the car is pretty stock. We've got these black uh, STI badges. When we come around to the rear, we've got this little spat on the bottom and the rear bumper, which is pretty nice. Uh, obviously the Cobb quad tip exhaust, which I'm a big fan of. I think it looks great and it sounds pretty good too. And then on the wing, we have these little wing dividers um, made by Perrin. I'm probably gonna remove these just because on a white car, I think they stick out too much. Um, but it's a pretty cool touch. There's also this little vortex generator on top. Um, I'm not sure who it's made by. I might paint it white or I might remove it. Not really sure yet. Windows are tinted, I think 35%. Uh, I'm not really sure, but it's, it's a pretty nice touch. It's not very hot inside, which is nice. And then on the front, uh, we have the license plate delete, uh, or I guess not delete, but kind of relocate to the side here. Um, I believe that's a Grim Speed mount with a little lock off plate here. Probably gonna remove that, maybe put a white one there and just kind of keep it a little bit clean. Uh, but best thing about the front end of this car is that it has paint protection film on it. So not gonna get any rock chips or anything like that because it's paint protection filmed up to here um, and the mirrors and the edges of the doors and the door handles. So yeah, the car's been taken care of pretty well. Um, let me pop the hood, show you what's under there. But uh, yeah, it's got keyless entry and push button start, which I'm a big fan of. Not having to pull that key out of your pocket, super nice. And we have hood struts, which are nice. So I don't have to worry about a hood prop. Uh, but yeah, it's a dinosaur of a motor. This is the EJ257, um, which I think they started using like early 2000s. Uh, so for 20 years or so. Um, it's a good motor uh, if you leave them fairly stock, which I do plan to do. This motor is 
fairly stock. The only thing done to it is the exhaust. It's got a Cobb catted downpipe, as well as obviously the catback. Other than that, it's stock with the stage two tune with the access port, um, stock intake. There's this little cover on the intercooler, which is nice to kind of protect it from rocks. Um, it's missing the cover here, but uh, I'll find something to do with that. But uh, yeah, probably only gonna do reliability mods in here. Probably. I don't think Subaru is like high horsepower, but uh, it's fun. It's a good cruising car. It's perfect for what I'm looking for, which is like a nice daily driver, get around town, maybe a nice road trip car. It's proven pretty well at that so far. It's a lot of fun to cruise around with. We're gonna keep cruising. Idaho and Montana are Luke and I's favorite states. Unfortunately, we have to pass through them pretty quickly if we want any chance of getting home in a reasonable time. But that's how you know it's a good road trip. There's a feeling that if I just had one more day, we'd be able to do this or that. But when it comes down to it, there's never enough time to see everything along the way. Deadlines have to be met, work has to be done, videos have to be edited. And before we knew it, we found ourselves almost out of Montana. But we had to justify just one last stop here before the next day. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere right now, and I think, I think this is like roughly where uh, Ben broke down with the rotary on the 48 state road trip. And we might actually be going like right by that exit. Maybe we can stop and see if there's any like little hose clamps on the ground still from when we were <laughs> working on it. You know, it's interesting to be back here. Yeah, a lot of good times here. Yeah, spent like 24 hours here at least. I remember it being significantly colder and significantly windier. These are the, the little houses that you ran through and found some graffiti in there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I don't know if we had shots of that in the video. Where's the tumbleweeds? We saw some tumbleweeds over here. Who would have thought that this would become a tourist destination for gears and gasoline? Yeah, <laughs> for me. That's enough reminiscing. If I stay here any longer with this Subaru, it might break. It's back on the road we go. We have a lot of miles to make up. We're still just under 2,000 miles away from home. The Midwest open road is a good place to catch up on those miles though. The only issue when driving here at night is the massive collection of bugs. The Midwest in the summertime at night is pretty gross because this car is covered in bugs. And unfortunately, I don't have Ben here with me to get him to lick it. But, yeah, I'm gonna be cleaning this for a while. Jeez. They have extra buckets because they know it's bad out here. I'm gonna use the long stick, the long boy. Might get some more leverage on this one. Bug guts. Well, it is another day, day three, I think. We made it to Minnesota last night, and uh, I think we have like 1,500 miles left, 1,000 miles left, something like that. We've already done 1,500, so we're just a little over halfway, maybe. Um, all in all, the car's been holding together really well. I haven't had any issues, knock on wood. The car is just kind of eating up the miles. Doesn't seem to really care, honestly. We were cruising last night, everything was great. Not a single issue. I don't expect an issue because it's a pretty new car, even though it's a Subaru. So uh, hopefully we can get some more days like that and we'll be home. Because honestly, I'm getting a little tired of not being home. But we'll get there. Feeling something holding me back Cut ties, no lies inside And I never meant to say that My eyes wide, I'll run and hide Seaside and I never wanna go back A long drive into the night Why 
What a journey in my seventh Subaru. What an amazing car. I'm well aware that Subarus aren't the most reliable car on the road, but sometimes that's not what it's all about. The undeniably cool rumble and driving experience of this car is what makes this Subaru a Subaru. And with the modern day amenities in the interior, it's quite possibly the most well-rounded vehicle I own. The perfect daily driver. But now that I'm back in my home state of Virginia, maybe it's time to start modifying it to see if we can make it even better. Alright, before we get into modifications on this car, you're probably wondering why I drove all the way out to Oregon to buy it. Well, the used car market is wild right now and I'm not about to overpay. I'm also looking for some pretty rare options. I was looking for a white car with no sunroof, but with push button start and keyless entry, and with the Alcantara seats. That's kind of a difficult option to find. And if you're looking for a car with these specific options, you can check out eBay Motors. They sponsored this video and they've been wonderful to work with. I had no fears buying this car sight unseen, and you shouldn't either. Check out the eBay Motors app or check out the link in the description below. And make sure you're subscribed to uh, see what else happens to this STI as we modify it. Well, I wish you great fortune on your journey home. Enjoy your trip across the U.S. It's a beautiful country, this U.S. <laughs> so here's a biscuit. Look at that. Look at that. Pine State Biscuits, Portland, Oregon. Go get yourself some. I remember right, I think this is where Ben broke down on the 48 day road trip. Uh, when he's, his, uh, his radiator was busting. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Not in the beginning. 